This is the third part of our video series, Continuous Delivery 101. In this part, we're going to cover some of the practices and principles of continuous delivery. These include the need for a repeatable, reliable process, the need to automate everything, version control everything, and build in quality from the very start. We're also going to redefine done as released. Many of these practices have been mentioned in the previous videos, but they are important enough to call out. It's vital that you develop a repeatable, reliable process and use it everywhere. This process is usually implemented as a deployment pipeline. Whether you're making a code change, updating an operating system package, or changing a configuration, it all needs to go through that same pipeline. When doing this automation, it's important to keep the actual logic out of your CI or CD tools. Some tools allow for scripting as part of their configuration, but you should not use it. Instead, the logic for the pipeline should live in things like scripts, which are under version control and executed by your CI CD system. These scripts can take input in the form of command line switches or environment variables in order to perform the right actions for the specific environment. Manual processes can be repeatable, but not reliably. It's important that everything is automated that can be. As we mentioned in an earlier video, regression testing is often done manually, but should not be. Using modern tools, entire environments can be provisioned automatically. If you need a development environment, there should be an automated way to create it. Nobody should ever need to log into any environment. It probably goes without saying, but deployments also need to be completely automated. This automation should have logic that allows you to use the same scripts or tools on every environment. It's rare, although not unheard of, to find teams today that aren't keeping their source code in version control. The same should be true for every part of your application. Things like configuration files should also be in version control. Do you use different database hosts on different environments? That information should be in a file in source control. The scripts that manage your database should also be versioned. Something rarely seen in source control is product documentation. As an important part of your user experience, it should be managed with the same rigor. It's natural to want to avoid pain, but you should fight the urge. As described in the book Continuous Delivery, you should do these things sooner and more often. Sometimes things are hard simply because they aren't done often enough. Finding out what went wrong with the release is much harder when there is a month worth of changes involved than when it's only a day's worth, or better yet, a few minutes. Many people say they don't want to release more often as a way to manage risk. It's been demonstrated many times that releasing more often actually decreases the risk. There's simply less to go wrong with a smaller release. We should be clear, things do and will go wrong. In a speech at Velocity Conference a few years ago, John Jenkins of Amazon showed some statistics. At that time, they had a 75% reduction in outages triggered by software deployments. More impressively, they had a 90% reduction in outage minutes. So not only did it fail less often, it was faster to repair when it did. You've all heard people say things like, it's done except for that one thing, or I just need to do something small. The definition of done has been one of the larger debates in agile circles for quite some time. With continuous delivery, it's not done if it's not live. It's important that we don't confuse deployed with released. You can deploy code that users don't see as often as you like. It's only released when the users can actually use it. In order to enable deployment of unreleased features, consider methods such as feature toggles, which allow you to disable features which are not ready for release. Keep in mind that one of the key reasons for implementing continuous delivery is to make software releases a business decision. There's nothing wrong with timing a release to an event for sales or marketing reasons. Having the new functionality already deployed and waiting to be turned on is a great way to do this. One of the most important parts of a DevOps culture is the feeling of shared ownership. If everyone is responsible for the full life cycle, there's no concept of, it works on my machine. As challenging as some parts of automation can be, the DevOps culture change can be the hardest. It's vital that these types of large changes have full support of management. As part of that management support, be careful what you measure. Goals should be team goals.
Thank you for watching this part of our video series. Make sure to check out part four where we're going to try to answer the question, where do I get started?